If you can see where the hydrogen has come from, what the carbon emissions are that went into producing that hydrogen, you can then use, uh, use that information to make an informed decision. We know that lots of corporations across Australia and internationally have got decarbonisation objectives and sustainability objectives they need to meet. And this scheme is going to provide that transparency so that they can be sure uh, that when they're buying the hydrogen, they're aligning that purchasing with those objectives. Throughout our hydrogen mini series so far, the idea of a guarantee of origin scheme has been mentioned over and over again. Today, we're going to find out why. I'm Elise Gatt, Senior Associate at Michaels and Alexander, and our guest on this episode is Cameron Matthew from the Clean Energy Regulator. As a manager for future carbon markets, Cameron is chiefly involved in the design of Australia's Hydrogen Guarantee of Origin Scheme. We were lucky to sit down with him to discuss how the scheme might look, the trials that are underway, and what a successful scheme will achieve. This series is, of course, produced in collaboration with the recent Australian Hydrogen Forum in Sydney. Make sure you like and subscribe to Michaelson Alexander Explains wherever you get your podcasts to get all of our episodes straight to your feed. Now, on with the show. Cameron Matthew is my name. I'm the manager of uh, the Future Carbon Markets team here at the, the Clean Energy Regulator. And, and, and my major job at the moment is, is the project lead to run the Guarantee of Origin trials. So could you briefly for us just outline what the CER's more broad role is in the kind of Australian energy market? So, I mean, the Clean Energy Regulator, we've been around for, for 10 years now, so we're very much a, a, a long presence in uh, both the carbon and renewables electricity markets. Uh, we are a carbon markets regulator. Our, our objective is to accelerate carbon abatement for Australia. The Clean Energy Regulator provides the underpinning regulatory frameworks for uh, the renewables energy market, uh, the, the carbon uh, offsets markets, as well as recording and collecting all of the emissions data for Australia under the National Greenhouse and Energy Reporting Scheme. So we provide that underpinning layer uh, for the industry to effectively decarbonise into the future. Could you explain for our listeners how the guarantee of origin scheme for hydrogen would function? Yeah, sure. I mean, the Guarantee of Origin Scheme is a bit of a, a natural extension of a lot of the work we do. Uh, we collected a lot of the emissions data around the, the large facilities across Australia. Uh, the Guarantee of Origin Scheme goes a bit further than that and starts to certify, in particular, at first and foremost, hydrogen and provide uh, some integrity around the carbon intensity of that hydrogen. So we take a lot of that emissions data, we take the hydrogen data coming from the industry and provides a, a form of certification as, as envisaged to give confidence to that hydrogen, where it came from, uh, what its source is, uh, what the intensity and carbon emissions are that are associated with it, so that downstream purchases of hydrogen in particular can make a really informed choice about, about what they're buying. Uh, and that's the kind of core of the scheme. Uh, we're at very early stages. The, the trial is working through a lot of the initial design, both from the, the IPHE and from the Department of Industry that have set out some of the framework. And then there'll be more work to come on how the scheme actually works in practice as we, as we move forward. Is the, the core idea behind the scheme really just about transparency um, and kind of allowing consumers to have a total understanding of what sort of emissions their hydrogen is generating or responsible for? Yeah, look, transparency is the core. That's absolutely right. If you can see where the hydrogen has come from, what the carbon emissions are that went into producing that hydrogen, you can then use uh, use that information to make an informed decision. We know that lots of corporations across Australia and internationally have got decarbonisation objectives and sustainability objectives they need to meet. And this scheme is going to provide that transparency so that they can be sure uh, that when they're buying the hydrogen, they're aligning that purchasing with those objectives. With hydrogen being a relatively new industry or growing industry in Australia, is the idea behind a guarantee of origin scheme based on similar schemes that have been rolled out for other industries? Has, has this worked to success in other industries? That's already the case, I think, in our renewable sector in particular. Um, the the large-scale generating certificates that we we um, we certify here at the Clean Energy Regulator effectively a, a, a certificate of origin already. It, it tells you where the power came from. It tells you when it was produced. Uh, it gives you confidence that it's renewable electricity. Uh, so we've already got some runs on the board in this regard in terms of implementing something similar. As far as a guarantee of origin certification, though, as a, as a kind of regulated national scheme, it's quite possible we, we could be the first, which would be very good for a kind of industry confidence 
in particular so that they can start making those investment decisions very early on. We have got a lot of the kind of architecture in place here at the Clean Energy Regulator and our experience with renewables. We can kind of fold that into hydrogen. It's a new sector and it's a growing sector and, and a lot of the information still needs to be captured and understood, but we're starting from a good place. A lot of people have compared the journey that renewables has been on to the journey that hydrogen could go on. So I guess when you talk specifically about these guarantee of origin schemes, what are the learnings that you took from designing, you know, those certif- certification schemes for renewables that are you know, mm. directly applicable to the work you're doing now for H2? That material is there, but I think I think we can do better in terms of its its user friendliness, its access accessibility, and its understanding. And I think the other thing we can certainly work on, and that's very much a focus of our trials, is trying to align it to industry need and business needs. So making it as streamlined and as efficient as possible is very very much at the forefront of our thinking around this compared to the renewable energy target, 20, 20, 20 plus years old now, um, National Greenhouse Energy Reporting Scheme, more than 10 years old now. We've got a lot of uh, experience with them, but those schemes were designed uh, a long time ago. We're actually much more equipped from a technological space to make it very efficient for business. One of the things that the CEO is very focused on at the moment is, is a kind of API first, a direct business to regulatory systems communication. So certainly we'd be expecting with the Guarantee of Origin Scheme to build that in at the start to make it very efficient for businesses to claim, report, uh, and and demonstrate the emissions associated with their hydrogen. So there's a lot of things that we can borrow from our experience previously, um, and hopefully we can start off building the best scheme we can from the start. The general public uh, is becoming more aware of the risk of greenwashing, and I think that's particularly relevant in mm. the energy sector and something that gas operators are particularly mindful of. Do you think this guarantee of origin scheme could help alleviate some of those concerns for the general public and for customers? The integrity and transparency, if we get that right, is going to fulfil that objective perfectly. There's a lot of design work to do to pull this thing together. But if we can build that that kind of world-class assurance scheme, it, it really will under, underpin the integrity of that low emissions hydrogen uh, industry. And I think the other voice that we certainly need to involve in that is are the downstream customers and even the export markets and what do they want to see and what's going to give their, them confidence. So while we're starting at the production side, we've got to explore you know, what customers want to see and how they want to be confident in the certification and 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 trust that that hydrogen is where it comes from effectively. The about in trials that are underway now and started in December. What are the the kind of key things that you're trying to iron out in terms of the design of of this thing? Mm. What are the key issues that the trials are hoping to kind of come up with an answer to? If you like, the government's funded us for eighteen months to run these trials. So we're currently in you know phase one. Phase one is trying to just explore the emissions calculations around hydrogen, and one of the really exciting things about doing it very early on is that we can actually use that and take some of the data to inform the international policy making process which is going on now we can actually feed that back and say well here's some real data applying it this works this doesn't work and kind of you know play that leadership role internationally that we're certainly at the forefront of uh, in in the hydrogen space but at the same time we're trying to test some of those things that we've talked about a bit before which are around how does a certificate look and feel how does it flow what where, what can you see and what can you experience from it and so we're starting that work in in this first phase of the trials and hopefully expanding that down the track, as I said, to some of the downstream users as well. So so progressively, so our first phase of the trial runs until about July at the end of this year, uh, the start of next financial year, uh, and then we'll roll into things like energy carriers. And and I think the, the most exciting prospect of all of this, I think, is is the downstream products, things like green steel, green aluminium. These are all the um, kind of enabled effectively by a hydrogen guarantee of origin scheme, you'll have the emissions information you need. And we might roll into that too, depending on how fast and, and what appetite there is to explore those things as well. So there's there's a lot of potential in the trials to explore the full full range of the hydrogen industry and obviously those exciting downstream products that uh, show so much prospect for Australia in particular. There was broader grants at the Australian Hydrogen Forum for a, a guarantee of origin scheme and a lot of industry leaders saying it's going to play a pretty important part in the mm. transition to hydrogen and the growth of the sector. There was also a lot of talk about how can we scale up as mm-hmm. effectively and as efficiently as, as possible. It, has the CER been under pressure to progress the guarantee of origin scheme as quickly as possible? Or, or are mm-hmm. you comfortable with the progression of the scheme today? Yeah, look, uh, we certainly hear that industry need 
Um, and I think the, the key part of that industry need is they need some confidence to make those investment decisions, right? So while, you know, building a government scheme, a certification scheme takes time, the international methodology setting is still progressing. So we can't really go too far ahead of that. You know, one of the, the key things industry did say is that we want to be heavily internationally aligned. You don't want a certification scheme that other countries aren't going to recognise. So we can't get too far ahead of that international dialogue which is progressing very rapidly, I must say. And then, as I said, it does take some time to get a government legislative scheme through. You, you know, you need to finalise the policy, you need to consult with industry, you need to, to legislate. And, and my colleagues at the Department of Industry who are taking the lead on that are, are kind of progressing that as we go. But as I said, we've, we still need some uh, international signals on certain aspects like energy carriers. Having said that, the, the benefit of the trials, right, and this is one of the real objectives here, is to, to kind of apply the methodology and come up, come up with you know any problems and, and feed them back, but ultimately give, give those participants and the broader industry some confidence around how a scheme is emerging. And hopefully, and, and our expectation is that's enough to, to, to provide, while you might not have a scheme, you'll certainly have the understanding, the expectations in place for those you know, investment decisions to progress. And that's the one thing that we really want to see going. At the CER, we're obviously looking looking to implement as quickly as we can, and, and we have to wait on those things. Um, but we're well equipped and we're, we've got the background in this to implement quickly around new carbon schemes. We've been uh, put under the pump in the past around uh, things like the Emissions Reduction Fund, uh, the Safeguard Mechanism, to get them up and running very quickly. So we, we, we certainly, once we've got that certainty, can get rolling very quickly. Um, but if the trials do what they're designed to do, which is my job, uh, it's to provide industry with that confidence to progress those decisions. You've obviously mentioned there that, and previously that the funding lasts for the next 18 months. Do you have any idea around when we're going to have a finalised guarantee of origin scheme or is that um, kind of a secondary consideration because you're more concerned about that signal that you're sending to business at this particular juncture? Look, that's very much a question for government. Um, that's not something that I can answer, and it's really a question for government to decide when that policy progresses. The Clean Energy Regulator, we're preparing to implement now, and we're making sure we get the design right so that we can implement quickly. And as I said, from the learnings of previous schemes, we can hopefully get a scheme up and running relatively quickly. So once those government decisions are made, we'll be running at full steam, I suppose. I can't really give you a date. We're working very hard and we're very scaling up very quickly to implement uh, at the moment. So our expectation is that it does happen relatively rapidly. There was also a lot of talk at the Australian Hydrogen Forum about the opportunity for Australia to be a green hydrogen superpower um, in the ability to export to countries around the world who are looking to decarbonise their energy mix. But there is strong competition from other countries who are also mm. poised to produce and export green hydrogen at similar or, or greater rates than Australia. Do you think a, a hydrogen guarantee of origin scheme could help position Australia at the front of that pack? Internationally, the, the Australia's emissions accounting and you know our carbon markets are very held in very high regard. Our carbon units and carbon markets have high integrity and there's a lot of confidence and trust in those markets as they stand. Pe people who buy electric, you know, renewable electricity certificates have confidence that they came from renewable electricity. And I think that's probably the key competitive, well, one of the key competitive advantages Australia brings is, is a strong regulatory environment and a heck of a lot of trust in those carbon emissions. And, and so having a strong, in particularly a government-backed regulator uh, administered guarantee of origin scheme is probably going to give us a competitive advantage in terms of the integrity. There should be very few questions if we do our job right around where the hydrogen came from and the emissions associated with it. So I think that's where Australia does have a competitive advantage. Uh, there are lots of other countries out there who have similar kind of geographic uh, advantages, uh, similar kind of opportunity in particular with uh, either natural gas or, or solar as the basis for a hydrogen industry. But but we certainly have that plus a, a really good regulatory regime, which should position us well, I think. Thanks for listening. And an even bigger thank you to Cameron for his time. Look out for our next episode where we speak to special guests from the CFIRO and the Department of Industry, Science, Energy and Resources. A big thanks to our partner, the Australian Hydrogen Forum, for helping us bring this series to life. There's going to be plenty more hydrogen-powered discussion during Australian Energy Week coming up in Sydney in June. For tickets, head to energyweek.com.au. See you soon.